Space weather this week continues to be a bit on the calm side, but it may not stay like that for very long. As we take a look at the Earth-facing disk, we do have a few active regions in Earth view, but really what's really keeping our interest are all the snake-like filaments on the disk. In fact, one of them erupted back on the second, and this eruption doesn't really have much of a signature in coronagraphs, but it does look from the disk imagery, it does look like it could be Earth-directed. In this case, we're going to expect a light impact of any at all, and that will be probably late on the 5th into the 6th, but we don't really have any model predictions for it because, again, it's such a wispy structure, it's hard to tell. Again, and also on the 3rd and into the 4th, we had yet another eruption from another filament in the south. This one also didn't give us much of a coronagraph signature, so again, if there's going to be any impact at all, this one could be like late on the 6th or 7th, and again, not expecting all that much, but we are definitely keeping our eyes on the level of disturbance. And meanwhile, we also have a big region that has been growing quite quickly. This is region 3270, and it now has become a big flare player. We are uh, could conceivably see X-class flares from this region, although it has not flared yet. And we could conceivably see some radiation storms from this region as it continues to rotate to the sun's west limb. So we are definitely keeping our eyes on it. Now, switching to that recent G4 level solar storm we had back on March 24th, not only did we get Aurora cleared down to places like South Carolina and Texas, New Mexico and Arizona, and as far north as places like Tasmania and Perth, Australia, but Aurora wasn't the only visible impact. Rocket Lab also delayed their launch of a black sky payload for over a couple hours. And with over 3,000 people watching their live stream and waiting, they finally mentioned it online and also then later on their live stream. Now, the original launch was scheduled for a time when the Earth was still passing through the core of the solar storm. So they decided to play it safe and they waited. Luckily, Earth was actually nearing the end of the storm and it only took a couple hours before it became clear we had passed through the entire core and the effects began to wane. So they locked up a new time and the launch went off without a hitch. Now, Rocket Lab was not the only launch that was impacted that day. SpaceX also had Starlink launch number 79 be impacted. Now, it wasn't a delay this time because of the solar storm, but it did mean that the orbit insertion for the satellites had to be raised from 270 kilometers up to 320 kilometers in order to avoid all the excess drag from the inflated atmosphere due to that solar storm. But even at that, once the satellites were in their orbit insertion, they managed to lose five kilometers of altitude in less than two days during their PLT checkout. Nonetheless, everything turned out okay, and those satellites have now been boosted to higher orbits. But it just goes to show you that space weather is finally becoming a real player in the launch window trade space, and both Rocket Lab and SpaceX, they're setting precedents for the future. For more details on this week's space weather, including how the recent activity could affect you, come check out my channel or please see me at spaceweatherwoman.com.